I think we're I think we're recording. I think we're good to go. Okay, uh, perfect. Jeremy, I appreciate you taking the time with us, man. I've um, we just ran a, a, a few videos. We had Jared Eikoff come in via the Skype and and had I sent it out to our our eight U ball clubs all the way up to our seventeen U ball clubs and um and had those guys is there any kind of question that you know a, a guy with your experience at, at every level to the the major league level being um we got a lot of a ton of St. Louis Cardinals fans as you well know in our area and right. a lot of guys that um remember you being a, a player with St. Louis and then getting into the um played in Australia for, played over in Korea, right? Um, and then right, in right. all the different levels and, and played for an old pitching co- an old coach of mine that, I mean, that's how, that's how we got hooked up was Mongo. Yeah. Um, exactly. But um, anyway, so we've, we've got, I, I let those guys know, it's like, Hey, we're going to chance to, to ask a guy that has got a ton of baseball experience and pretty neat questions. So, um once again man appreciate the time and we'll jump right into it so Sounds good man yeah got a guy Noah waggy he wants to know and no no played for us last year um big tall long lefty lefty ball player he's got a chance he, he's he's got some tools um and he wants to know what is his approach off the tee so I do a lot of tee work every day when I start hitting starts with tee work. Um, and I think that's, you know, we've talked about that. It's, it's crucial, uh, especially when I get in a slump or anybody gets in a slump. I know a lot of guys, a lot of big league guys go back to the tee, start from scratch, try to feel their swing, get back into it. Um, for me, I do a lot of stuff middle away on the tee and then middle. I don't do a lot of, a lot of work with inside pitches. Um, you know, I, I think every baseball player can pull a pitch. Everybody can hit an inside pitch. I think when when you're skilled enough and talented enough, you can work away. You know, line drives over shortstop. Um, you know, shooting that left center gap. And for you for being me, a left, I'm a gap. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, and I think gap to gap for any hitter is a good place to be. I think it's. T- a tough mentality to have if you're trying to pull the pitch all the time. Um, you know, I've I've sit I've sat on pitches that were that were inside, and uh, you know I've got to them, but that's not my bread and butter. My bread and butter is working middle of the field, gap to gap. So especially on T, I'm staying I'm staying middle away, middle of the field, and then a little bit right center. I'm never pulling the ball down the right field line. I'm never. You know, I'm never trying to hit the ball down the left field line. Um, in games, it happens. You know, as an athlete, you have to adjust, make adjustments, um, and it happens. But for a majority of the time, it's left center, uh, middle, and then a little bit of right center. Right on, man. Absolutely. That, that it's <clears throat> like you said. There's when you're going good, you can backspin a ball into the opposite field gap and run and take off running. Yeah. Man, that that is like. And you can stay on it, and it you don't feel rushed. But I mean, you, you catch it just at the right time. Yeah, yeah there's exactly. There's, and you you keep a rally going that way too. I mean, so I mean, the home run's big, the home run's sexy, but you've seen it. You guys are you know you're down five, a walk, blooper, three run shot. Next thing you know, like you've, you're rolling. Yeah, you're you yeah. I mean, and and if you can backspin those doubles, you can keep the keep the, the train moving along, man. A lot of times you're in better shape. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, um, Garrett Jones wants to know how many swings a day is he trying to get in? And I'm going to, I'm going to assume that that's off the tee. That's front flips that's swinging, but we'll go on like a typical normal off season workout day for you. I'll start with, <clears throat> I'll start with about 30 swings to left center so i'm going 30 swings left center off the tee sw- yeah off the tee 20 swings middle and then 10 swings right right center 
Um, like I said, you know, I'm not really trying to shoot the ball to the right field. So I don't, I don't work on that a lot. A lot of it, a lot of it for me is going off feel. Um, if, if I'm smoking the ball to left center and it's feeling good, you know, I'm, I'm not going to keep going with it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to end on that, that good feel. You know, I don't want to swing myself into a, into a feeling that I don't want. So if it's going good and I'm on 15 swings, I'm good, you know, move to the next thing. Um, and then flips, I don't really have a set number of flips. Um, I'd say from anywhere from 100 to 200. Um, and again, a lot of what I do is off feel. Uh, if, if I'm getting every pitch, if I'm backspinning balls, line drives, um, then I'm, I'm fine with moving on. There's not, there's not a number. And I know for a lot of guys, they have to take 50 swings you know, with the T on the outside, 50 swings, T in the middle, 50 swings with the T on the inside. I'm not a set numbers guy. I'm a, I'm more of a feel. So I'd say, I'd say probably right around, you know, 200 swings um, between T and front flips. And then <clears throat> I'll probably do about, about 30 swings just live. As long as somebody's filling it up, I'll probably take six or seven, take a break six or seven you know take a break and then keep rolling um but the the last thing i want to do is hit till i get tired is that it's i want to hit until i really feel good you know if you're if you're feeling tired you don't want to you don't want to take more swings you don't want to hit to that point i know a lot of guys they hit until they're tired i want to stop before i get to that point i want you know i, I want to feel good i want to keep all my energy up i want every swing to feel the same with the same amount of energy i don't want to back off at all uh, that, br- that makes a really good point i was i was in rome georgia and and come out of the gate and sw- hit a few doubles early hit a few balls hard early and then i had i had an issue the fastball was getting up on me so i would go in be- before the game so you get there, you stretch, you do your pregame stuff, early uh-huh. work, then you go out and take BP. Well, you you catch your cat you catch your pitchers in the bull. I mean, you'd have bullpen maintenance to do right. so. And then come out and get your early work in on the hitting side and then take team BP. And then in between your BP, this is at home. In between BP, you've got that hour and a half where you've got some time to kill, um, or, you, or you, you've got some research to do. Or you're trying to, depend on how you're going. You're, I mean, right. If you're in the zone, you're in the zone, and like yeah, you exactly. said, it depends on the feel. If you're grooving, let's go out with some good confidence. Let's groove a little bit. Um, I got into a spot where I was, I was taking, let's do like 25 balls. Out of the two wheel ATEC machine, yeah, full full cog as hard as that thing would throw, and I would get in the game and I would I would swing at the ball before it ever left the pitcher's <laughs> hand, and before I knew it, man, I was hitting two <laughs> I was I was every single pitch in the game. I was hitting like two oh four at the at the break and was just an absolute train wreck. Um, our, our hitting coordinator come in, Jack Maloof, he comes in, he unplugs the machine and he says, Hey, for this whole next homestand, you're not showing up before four o'clock ever. And our BP started at four o'clock. He's like, uh-huh. you, you cannot get here before four o'clock. Impossible. You can't do it. And he, he kicked me out of BP. He would not, <laughs> he would let me swing off the tee. And, um, sure enough, man, it, it did. It, it turned my season around, but, um, to your point, not swinging to get tired, like swing to feel good. And right. that was it. Like the only thing I had ever known was I just got to, I got to keep working. I got to work harder. I got to work harder. And there's a difference. There's a difference of working hard. We want to work hard physically, but if we can work smarter, man, it, it helps the physical part out. Right. So much. you said rounds of six to seven. And we see that everywhere at the the professional level, especially. And then uh, the college ranks, I mean, you're going to see rounds of six or seven. Why is it? I had had an instructor tell me this during this lesson that I had learned from from Jack Maloof Uh in in Rome. Um, 
And he had told me, it's like, this is why we only take six or seven um, balls around. And he broke it down. Have you, have you had anybody break that down to you as far as, you know, when you're a young player, anybody's like, dude, we, we're only taking six, seven around here. Like, no, we, we had um, the, the way I was explained to it. And I mean, you're going to be right on this is what's an average at bat. Like you maybe see three and a half pitches in an average right. AB and you're doing really good. If you're seeing, if you see five pitches in at bat, you are really getting deep in the count. I mean, you right. think ball one, strike one, ball two, and hopefully we're hitting in a two, one count and we're, we're making a swing on a good pitch, but right. um, we're doing really good. If you know, the more pitches we see in an AB, but we're never going to see more than six to seven, eight pitches in an at bat. And so, yeah, it's true. Why would we practice swinging 10, 11, 12, 13 different times in a round when that's never going to happen? I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, both Chet does it last year and hits a, you know, 13th pitch home run and guys do it, but an average at bats like three and a half pitches. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was watching, actually, yesterday I watched Mookie Betts. He had a, I think it was a 13 pitch AB at yeah. Fenway and hit a grand slam. That's and the pitches were unbelievable pitches. He's you know one of the best hitters in the game, but that's not everybody. You know what I mean? So you want your you know your your span, your mental you know your thought process to be for a short amount of time, just like your AB is going to be, which you know is exactly what he's saying, which I completely get. It does well. You know how it goes, man. Like, it takes an ex- such an extreme amount of focus. To, I mean, to hit a baseball coming in, it's so hard. And, and you know, if you swing yourself into bad habits, which is what you're talking about earlier, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm kind of going off field. I don't want to swing till I feel tired. I want to swing till I feel good. And then I want right. to move. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to hit till I hit bad. I'm trying to hit till I hit good. And once I get there, I got to be good enough to know that, hey, you know what? It's time to fight in a game, man. Now it's a dog yeah. fight. So, exactly. Uh, that makes sense, man. I, there's, I'm glad that you, that you, you, you hit on that because I, and even as instructors, I get into spots where I get caught throwing and throwing. It's like, dude, Hey, you got to give this guy a break, man. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he's already at like a nine or 10. Like all you're going to do right. is just get tiring at bad habits. Yeah. That's a, that's a big thing for the young kids that I've given lessons to that they'll hit until you tell or that until you tell them to stop, they're not going to say, Hey, I need a break. So, you know, as, as instructors, we have to say, all right, it's, it's, you know, it's time to take a break. And just like for you yourself, when you're in there taking, you know, six, seven swings, five, six, seven swings, you have to say, hey, you know, that's good. Because there's, there's times where, you know, if I hit four or five line drives in a row, I'm getting out. I don't need all, all the swings that, you know, the, the coach is willing to give me. You know, I'll, I'll get out on the ones I feel good with. Yeah, yeah absolutely, man. Well, um. Uh, Pete Britton wants to know what did his workout routine consist of and how did he take care of his body before and after the workout? So let's go, let's go off season workout. We're off season right now. Let's go off workout with that to begin with. Like on a, on a, on a weekly routine and you know, it doesn't have to be specific, but yeah, weekly routine, what you're getting into, and then how you're taking care of your body post-workout. Just waking up and crushing breakfast. Um, that that was a huge thing for me. There was there were times where I'd be eating, you know, I forget, I think about a seven-egg omelet for breakfast. Just, you know, crushing that and then eating, um, eating yogurt with a little bit of protein powder in it and some, some berries. Just, so just crushing food, but when I do that, it's, it's good food. Yeah. Because um, I'm I'm planning on if this is the only thing I'm doing that day, the workout. 